What makes a house a home? We've asked the people of Scotland to enter their houses into Scotland's Home of the Year. Now our judges are visiting the top three from each region, choosing one each week to go through to our national final. Scoring them on architectural merit, distinctive design and original style are interior designer Anna Campbell-Jones. What I'm looking for in a home is a sense of uniqueness, sincerity, but most importantly, love. Architect and lecturer Michael Angus. As a teacher, I aim to inspire and I in turn love to be inspired and I'm looking for homes that will do that through being well crafted, distinctive and just delightful. And lifestyle blogger Kate Spears. I'm looking for those final charming details that take a space from just being a building to somewhere that feels like home. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm probably the youngest thing in here. Really unexpected thing, someone's nicked the stair. In the end, only one can be Scotland's Home of the Year. Today, our judges are visiting the shortlist from the Highlands, and they're starting with a dainty renovation in Fort William. Dating from around 1900, Lorne Cottage is home to Kira, Aaron, and their dog, Ghost. This is our first home together, first bought home anyway together. So it's only really been seven, eight months of actually living here, and we decided that we want to do quite a bit of work to change it into the style that we liked. I get a lot of inspiration from Instagram, looking at different interior pages and stuff like that and seeing what's in fashion. A wee bit of tack here and there I quite like too. I would say as well, like we both keep a keen eye actually on this programme for example, we've watched it for the last couple of years. We always kind of decide, oh I like that one, maybe mm -hmm. we change that. I remember saying to Anna, I was like, one day when we have our big house, like I'm going to go on this programme and then never really thought like that the wee house would be anything that anyone would be interested in. but. We're absolutely delighted. <laughs> With entry to the home via the snug, there is also a kitchen, a bathroom and a bedroom. So this is our favourite spot in our home. We no longer let our wee dog ghost on the bed or the couch since moving here. So we spend a lot of time just down in front of the fire, giving him lots of love and we feel very spoiled to have a stove in our home as well. Armed with only the basic facts about the property and its owners, the judges must now assess Lorne Cottage. Well, that is cute as a button, isn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness, look at the details from the brass letterbox to the colours on the doors and even the drain pipe matches. <laughs> it's almost like a child's drawing of a kind of perfect imaginary home, isn't it? I wonder if we're just going to walk into one big room. <laughs> <laughs> so, shall we see how big it is on the inside? Dark. <gasps> Love that massive sofa. This is gorgeous. And look down here is oh. the favourite spot. <laughs> oh, this is just lovely. I've got a mustard velvet sofa in my home as well, and I have to say it's probably my favourite spot. <laughs> yeah, even though the walls are so dark, I feel like it's been warmed up by this beautiful sofa and that pop of colour behind us. But also that you're getting hints from like the lighter wood floors and the mirror kind of bounces a light around so it never feels like it's dark or dingy. Yeah, I think the dark colour does make the room feel bigger, but even though there's quite a lot of things in quite a small room. I wasn't actually expecting to get another window. I thought that was going to be the only one. So that's definitely making it brighter. But this thing of it sitting right at your front door, isn't that brilliant? And you get yeah. so accustomed to like having a hall, you think someone's coming home, they're just literally walking straight in. That's brilliant. But because it's opening off the garden, on a nice day, you just leave that door open and just be completely connected between the inside and the outside. Oh, cosy little bedroom. Wonderful colours. Look at the colour of that headboard. The rust against that muted, I don't even know what to call that, grey-blue? It's like undercoat yeah, grey, yeah. isn't it? It's very clever the way this room just arranged itself around this bed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got some good small home tricks going on here with the floating shelf and the floating bedside table. It means that you're getting storage but you can see the floor going all the way to the wall. It, it just helps to enhance the sense of space. It's a lovely generous kitchen. <laughs> it's just really simple, just wrap the units around and you've actually got a perfectly comfortable, happily working kitchen, it's brilliant. I love the shelving that they've created using 
bits of old scaffolding poles and big planks. It's really robust. It means you could store like a heavy casserole on there, but it also looks really cool. I love that even though this is a small kitchen, I probably wouldn't call it minimal. For me, a busy kitchen is just perfect. You should have everything out, everything to hand. So it's quite nice to see that it's obviously functional, but it looks so perfect too. I'd always be a fan of allowing spaces to kind of flow into each other, you know, and so there'd be a real temptation to knock a hole, but I wouldn't do it. I think there is something really nice about keeping these rooms as separate rooms. Oh well, yeah, because you'd have to jump over the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your dinner. Oh, look at this. Oh, we have a tile envy. <gasps> Lovely tiles. <laughs> okay, you can probably fit in here, look. <laughs> Next to the plants, a little greenery. <laughs> so tempting to treat by. <laughs> <laughs> They've got excellent taste in tiles everywhere in this home, but especially in here. I love these sort of floral mosaics and, of course, the pink. And then you've got the greenery to sort of brighten it up. It feels very fresh. Well, what I like about this home is they seem to arrange everything around the greenery. It's like, start, we'll get the plants in, and then we'll figure everything else <laughs> around about it. There's so many clever space-saving ideas in this home. Here we've got a perfectly standard size basin, but they've turned it around through 90 degrees and put it on top of like a gym cabinet, which gives you loads of storage underneath and still a decent sized basin. I've never seen that combination, but it works so well. The judges will now mark Lorne Cottage out of 10 with functionality, distinctiveness and design in mind. One score will be held back until the judges have seen all three homes when their combined scores will be revealed. I knew from the get-go that I would be smitten with this home. I saw that lilac door with the dried floral wreath and the letterbox, and I knew straight away we were about to see something special. I think there's probably a misconception that smaller houses have to be quite minimal, but this home was so busy throughout, but in a way that was really functional. Everything was laid out so well, and it never felt like it was too small or claustrophobic in any way. I'm going to give this home a 10. What I love about this home is that it's compact without compromise. When you only need a metre squared of splashback, you can get the most luxurious tiles. When you only need two handles for a cupboard, you can get really delicious ones. And I love that the homeowners have treated themselves in this way. This home is an exercise in diminutive perfection. I'm going to give this home a 10. What's interesting here is when I first arrived at this home, I thought, what we have here is just a beautiful little box. And boxes by their nature are constraints. It was lovely to discover that when you came inside, it wasn't like that. It actually felt quite generous. I really enjoyed just moving through the home, which actually flowed really rather well for a very small building. Next in line for the judges' consideration is a church conversion in the Black Isle. Dating from the 1870s, the tower is home to Rachel, Rob and their dog Tia. We lived in Inverness for just over 20 years and kids had left home. We actually wanted to move to a small... I wanted to move <laughs> to a small fishing village, cottage. But this place came up at the same time as we were looking and we walked in and thought, yeah, I want that the space and the light and all of those things. We just fell in love with it. The original conversion was carried out in the 80s and in the eight years that Rachel and Rob have lived here, they've been putting their own stamp on the home. We really like a mixture of old and new. A lot of it is very inspired by travel. We never go on holiday without taking a cardboard tube so we can come back with some vintage posters or things that we found when we've been away. On the ground floor, there is a grand, full-height living room and to the sides, there is a snug, an ensuite bedroom and a kitchen diner. On the first floor, there's a master bedroom with ensuite and another impressive living space with adjoining tower room. And on the second floor, there are two more bedrooms. So this is our favourite place in the home because this is where we chat, this is where we cook, this is where we drink. It's a very sociable area and we have a lot of fun in here. And now the judges arrive for their first glimpse of the tower. <laughs> I'm getting a crick in my neck. I think that's the, <laughs> the tallest um, entrance I've ever seen. It's literally towering over us. <laughs> I always just get completely blown away by these types of buildings by stone. They're just incredible, aren't they? Shall we have a look? Oh, 
Wow. It's almost Escher like, isn't it? That staircase. So that's got like a half landing, and then that's connecting to a level, and then another half landing, and then another level. Well, that's theory to heaven. <laughs> I love that they've kept all the arches in here, not just the doorways, but also these little windows into the next room, which actually look like art because they just give you a glimpse into, into what we're going to be walking into. Church conversions can sometimes end up feeling a bit dark because once you carve up a really big volume that's only got windows at either side, you end up with a kind of dark space in the middle. But because it's a kind of transverse slice, you've got light going all the way through and you can see the other arch on the other side. But it's really interesting, I think, because, you know, you think of churches as, you know, the space goes that way. Mm. And what's happened here because of the subdivision, suddenly you've got a sort of an equivalent sort of feeling of space, but it's putting all the emphasis back on that wonderful big window. So you get a sort of a sense of a kind of a nave space in a church by doing this. I think that's been a really clever way of separating the building. Oh, wow, look at that colour. Oh, hot. Oh, this is really fun, isn't oh, it? Oh, look at us, really towering over you. <laughs> feel very regal up here. <laughs> what are you going to make us? <laughs> I'll rustle you up an omelette, shall oh, I? Oh, lovely. I feel like we're on a cooking show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a brilliant little view from here. See these little steps adding up onto the window? I mean, I think they've maybe been added, but that, isn't that just a lovely feature? It's a brilliant space for socialising. I can imagine actually a number of people preparing food here. It's like a lovely mise en place here. You can pass the food up to people getting stuck in around the table. Just a really good party room, I think. Feels like they've had to create all these surfaces and storage just to display the amount of stuff they have. Everywhere you look, there's beautiful ceramics, there's plants on every single surface. And it all feels very styled in a kind of undone sort of way. So it's nice to get those hints of personality everywhere you look. Oh, a very comfy bedroom. But I love the way you've ended up with the window going down to the floor in here. Yeah, even though it's not the full arch, it's still impressive. I mean, I just think the conversion has been really great. I mean, you often see that, particularly with the windows, sometimes the conversions can get quite crude, you know, like floors can just bang up against them. But that actually does look as if that window was meant to be like that, doesn't it? And even though this is quite a normal size bedroom, you've got these really interesting connections to that central space. I love the way the spaces in this home interact with each other. Oh, <laughs> One big arch. Goodness me. This is just wonderful, isn't it? I don't think I've ever been in a home that's over so many different levels, and who would have expected to get all the way up here and find, like, a surprise gigantic party space? And this is also split level. It's like even the split levels have got split levels. There's so many wonderful details in here. I love that they've painted the beams black, so it's a, such a contrast to all the white. It really makes it pop, especially with all the reds. I've noticed that some of the arches are pretending to be sort of structural form, and then some aren't. And so they're sort of just playing a game with the conversion. You know? It's just such fun. So we've been climbing up and up and up, and there's even more stairs through there and another doorway. So are we going to get to go even higher? Oh, <laughs> so hope so. Yeah, what's one more set of stairs at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Three seats, oh. one for each of us. Oh. Oh, careful. <laughs> we've been on quite a journey through this home, and I love that the end point is this tiny little red fun room. I mean, we would have been in the bit that would have just been for the bell tower, you know, turn it into this wonderful little snug space. What a brilliant place to peek out the windows and uh, have a tipple. How will the judges rate the tower? Anna is holding back her score until they've all seen the final home. I think when a home is this impressive in size and structure, it can be really tricky to make it homely and charming, but the homeowners completely manage that by packing in so much personality. On every surface, there seemed to be some sort of trinket or plant or relic from traveling, and it was just those little details that really made it a home. I'm going to give this home a 10. I thought this home was just a marvel. I thought it was amazing. It really is a wonderful, engaging conversion. It's humorous, it's fun, but without being disrespectful to the original building. And that, I think, is an incredibly difficult thing to do. I'm going to give this home a 10. 
Exploring this home has been a real adventure. You get a sense that the homeowners are also really adventurous. They've been really bold with colour. They've filled the home with wonderful selection of objects and eclectic art. And there's so many different places to be. I think there's a space in this home for every possible mood. The final contender from the Highlands is an 18th century dovecote folly in Culloden. Set in an acre of enchanting garden, Loch Lan House has been the family home to Rory and Ailey for the past 18 years. They live here with the youngest of their six children, Athol. It's quirky. It's an adorable, old, loving house that's been really kind to us. Most people are a bit taken aback. We're kind of house blind to it now because it's just the way it is. It's but, home, uh, yeah, I suppose it's, it's not your normal. It's all Rose Folly. He said, I don't care what you do, as long as you make it a rock star pad. So, hence, uh, <laughs> slightly carried away, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to everyone's taste, but we think it's fun and a bit different. It's just been a bit of a labour of love for the last 18 years. Wrapped around a circular hallway, the older part of the home has two bedrooms, a living room, a utility room and a bathroom and accessed via a spiral staircase is an art studio. The more recent extension provides a living room, a kitchen diner, a shower room, and a master bedroom complete with a luxurious bathtub. This is our favorite spot in our home. It's a beautiful bath that came from Paris. We designed the entire room around it. It's time for the judges to get their first impression of Loch Lan House. Wow. <laughs> It looks like we're going to be travelling back in time, doesn't it? <laughs> this looks like something out of a fairy tale, doesn't it? I love the arch of roses over the garden fence there, and the vegetation has just been allowed to just sort of thrive around that white exterior. I think it's amazing there was a time in Scotland, you know, you could have all your land. You didn't need any permission. If you wanted to build a sort of bonkers little folly, you could just go ahead and do one. I feel like I'm being led towards this beautiful arch. Should we go see? So many plants, feels like we're still outside. I know, I kind of didn't want to leave the garden, but I kind of <laughs> haven't. <laughs> it's a strange little space, this isn't it? Obviously it's just been built to just try and connect the two bits, isn't it? It's like a lovely quality in its own right. I'm not too sure where we should be headed, but I'm thinking maybe down here. Okay, all right, lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> This is just what I was expecting. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see a hanging chair. You know me. Got to get in there. It's a good spot to view this. Oh, it's completely like cornucopia of fabulousness, this home. It's actually, I think, really quite a simple space. It's a long, thin space, but that nice sort of change in the section, you know, just the mono pitch up to the clear story, which I think would actually give you really nice morning light. I think that's east. I love how everything just seems bigger and better in this space. Even that cheese plant over there is probably the biggest I've ever seen. And then they've got this incredible unit here, which, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. That's a portal into another <laughs> dimension. It's Narnia over there. <laughs> the, the dream is just carrying on. <laughs> Have you ever seen a table like that? I actually can't believe we're standing in a kitchen. No. It doesn't feel like a kitchen at all. I'm just checking to see if it's real. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is real. Michael, these clear story windows of yours are giving me an absolutely wonderful view of the sky and the treetops. I really didn't expect to see that. It's a lovely trick, that, and you don't see it enough. Mm. If you do things like this, you can always get these lovely high moments and a view of the sky that otherwise you just wouldn't get. Everything in this home is so large and in charge. The plants are big, they're thriving. I can't imagine moving them anytime soon. So it's like, once they've found a place in the home, that's where they belong. It feels like everything in this home is here because why not? <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Look what I found. Wow. <laughs> A oh. golden bath. That's the favourite spot. <laughs> and you know, I would normally try it, but I need a willing volunteer. Oh, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> it's quite deep. I'm going to almost disappear. <laughs> You'd think that at my age, I'd have seen it all, but I can 
honestly say I have never lain in a golden bath under a glitter ball and a chandelier held in the teeth of a giraffe. You can take that off your to-do list, can you? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think if Tarzan and Jane came back from the jungle, this is the home they'd build. I feel a bit more Jane than Tarzan, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> that roof light is really beautifully placed, actually, for the bath. I could imagine lying here and being able to see the stars. Wow. <laughs> yeah, just the wow. It's, it's like an optical illusion. <laughs> I feel like Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. I've just kind of come through this sort of magical door. I feel like if I open that door, where we were won't be there anymore. But look how impressive that staircase is. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, I think we are going to finally get up these stairs and see that room we saw from the outside. Shall we have a wee look? Wow, oh, through a hatch. <laughs> <laughs> What an amazing space to create. And... This is definitely more like what I had in mind from the outside. It's like a breath of fresh air in here. And I love that we get to see that arch window, which we saw from the front. I can imagine you could come up here, you close this hatch, and you're absolutely guaranteed privacy for whatever kind of wild reverie you choose. It feels as this home is just about interior thoughts and dreams and where are they all created? And it feels like they all are created in this room. This is where the magic is made. Now the judges will decide the scores for Loch Lan House. Kate's mark is under wraps. You can't not admire the singular creative vision that has been brought together in this absolutely astounding home. I think a lot of people perhaps couldn't imagine living in a home like this, filled with so many extraordinary objects and with such an eccentric interior design scheme. But that's the point. This home is absolutely the homeowner's vision. I'm going to give this home a 10. Reminded of something that George Bernard Shaw said, which was that some people see the world and ask why, and there are others that dream of things that never were and say, why not? And I think this home is a delightful exercise in the why not. Incredible, unforgettable, magical dream of a home. I'm going to give this home a 10. Once we walked in, it was a magnificent sensory experience that was completely bold and, and really touched upon the homeowner's creativity. They completely committed to that design throughout the home. I think from the outside, I expected the home to be quite serene and calm, but actually when we walked in, it was theatrical, it was bold. But I love that the homeowners had kind of let their creative freedom just run wild. Now the judges have visited all three homes, they can see how their scores compare and reveal this week's finalist. First, it was Lauren Cottage in Fort William. Michael held his score back. This absolutely dinky, delightful little home. Kate, you gave it a 10. I too gave it a 10. Michael. Oh, interesting. I mean, I thought it was a wonderful, I mean, you'd have to say petite and gorgeous, like squeezing all the wonders of home into the smallest space imaginable. Really, really wonderful. I'd sometimes wondered if maybe life might have been slightly compromised for that, but nevertheless, what a wonderful little home. And I gave Lorne Cottage a nine. Ooh. So that gives Lorne Cottage 29. Next, Anna is yet to reveal her score for the tower in the Black Isle. This really, really cleverly converted church. Michael, you gave it a 10. Yep. Kate, you also gave it a 10. I thought it was brilliant. I loved the way they'd ignored all the conventions about what you're meant to do with a church conversion. They'd filled it with all the things that they loved and their memories of all their brilliant travels. So I gave it a nine. Oh. <laughs> oh no. So that gives the tower 29. Yeah, still the score to beat. <laughs> Goodness me. And finally, Kate scores Lochlan House in Culloden. This extraordinary gothic extravaganza. I gave it a 10. Michael, you also gave it a 10. Yep. Kate. 
Well, where to start with this home? I think from the outside, I was expecting something completely different, but I have to admire the homeowner's commitment to that edgy interior. I think for me, it was probably a little bit bold at times, but I did love it, so I gave it an eight. Right. So that gives Lochlan House 28. So close. Ooh, what a high scoring region. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have a discussion, don't we? Between the tower and lawn cottage. I'm going large. I think the large is harder. I think I do. I think it's more difficult to do what they were being asked to do. Plus the actual conversion of the church itself, the fabric that had been sort of inherited by the homeowners, I thought was a wonderful conversion in its own right, even before it was being furnished. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring for Lawn Cottage. Yes, it was petite and there would be challenges about living in a home of that scale but it didn't feel compromised. It felt like a complete home. Every room had a beautiful atmosphere. I loved the way that it was connected by the color schemes and the textures that they'd chosen. I just thought it was a true delight. I completely agree. I think that it was so petite yet packed with personality and still so functional. It felt like they'd really use these clever ways of storing things and tucking things away and let their personality absolutely run free. Listen, we're talking about two 29s, well, all three homes for the Highlands, just incredible, all could be finalists. We need to choose one. There's two of you, there's only one of me. It's getting dark. <laughs> and we're outvoting you. Oh, okay, outvoting. <laughs> but I can accede that, yes, there is something really obviously quite wonderful about this, for sure, and it will never be forgotten in my mind as the smallest home I've ever seen. <laughs> well, I think it's important to champion compact living. You know, it's not all about having loads of space and dramatic architecture to create a really, really unique no. and personal home. No, no. So it's been difficult, but we're agreed that the finalist for the Highlands is Lawn Cottage. <laughs> and it's going to be the cutest, presumably smallest finalist that we have. <laughs> Lauren Cottage wins in the Highlands and is one step closer to claiming the title Scotland's Home of the Year. Next time... I'm just <laughs> so in love. ..the judges visit Central... Sabah! ..as the search continues for Scotland's Home of the Year.